Welcome back. We have a guest joining us here uh, this morning. I know maybe uh, many of you are familiar with No uh, Shave November. Well, there's also No Till November. We have Neil uh, Sass here. He is a soil scientist with the USDA uh, NRCS. And you are going to talk to us just a little bit about um, the importance of not tilling. I know November, this is a big time of year for farmers to be tilling up sure. uh, the ground and so forth. And you came up with No Till November. Talk a little bit about how that got started. Yeah, so um, we've been no-tilling on my farm for quite a while, you know, and I kind of like the no-shave November thing. It's kind of fun, you know, and I just thought there's a lot of similarities here between, you know, leaving the stubble and leaving the rough surface and, you know, not, not disturbing and everything. And I thought, why not no-till November? You know, that's a, that's a month when a lot of tillage does typically occur. Um, and so I, I pitched it to some of my coworkers and the reaction was, was a lot of fun. You know, they get this <laughs> smile on their face and then they start kind of chatting and stuff. So um, it just kind of went from there. I thought, you know, this people respond to this. This is fun. Right. And I think soil health, of course, is very important. And uh, t talk about uh, tilling is uh, we're also we're going to talk about how this applies to of course the large scale farm farm operations yep. but as well as uh, how we can apply it as backyard gardeners but Shh. just tilling overall it's it's pretty dramatic for the soil it is yeah we when we talk about soil health we talk about five basic soil health principles and manage the soil more by disturbing it less tillage is a very um, impactful physical disturbance to the soil you know and there's other ones like chemical disturbances and biological disturbances but um, you know tillage is, is a thing that a lot of people practice um, and, it, and it has a lot of effects to the soil you know we, we have great soils that were developed under a certain set of conditions you know one of which was was not annual tillage so um, you know the great soils that we have we're blessed with um, we need to sort of do these soil health things to keep them that way. And because there's a lot going on under the side, because we think when we're tilling it up that we're helping it, we're making yeah. it, you know, breaking things down easier and uh, making it, you know, and all of that. But really, there's a lot going on under there that we're really destroying, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a whole web of uh, organisms under there, the soil food web. Um, that, that they actually do the residue breakdown and the, and the decomposition and releasing the nutrients, you know, so they can be used by, by crops again during the growing season. Um, and, and that disturbance of turning the soil over and exposing it to the weather and to the elements, it, it kills a lot of organisms and it's a very dramatic thing. You know, it, it, it's like a tornado, a fire, and an earthquake all happening to our house all at the same time. Ooh, <laughs> and then so when you when you don't till, then how do you come into that for as far as planting? And so mm -hmm. you're you're cutting everything down, yep. leaving that, and then I know cover crops, of course, people want to come in to plant for to winter over and so forth. Yep. How do you do? You just plant in amongst all of that, then? Sort of, yeah. I mean, you you got to sort of do a little bit of planning and have the right equipment, you know. And um, equipment has advanced a lot in the last ten or twenty or, or so years that we have great no-till planters now that they can go right into the thickest residue and plant you know your your corn seed your soybean seed about just about any seed that you want to plant um, you know but there are the, some other adjustments that need to be made you know as far as weed control and nutrient management and things like that and so it's a whole systems approach to, to treating your soils better. And I know it's, it's sometimes a challenge for farmers to adapt to this. Talk about kind of overcoming those yeah, challenges. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit different for everybody. You know, some people have uh, livestock in their system. Some people, you know, grow, grow corn. Some people grow hay and different crops. So fitting it into to everyone's system is a little bit different. Um, you know, but uh, the challenges c can certainly be overcome. There's a lot of great resources out there, other farmers and neighbors and, and university folks and researchers. Um, so it, the, the first step is sort of giving it a shot. Because mm -hmm. you talk, it's a win-win. You say it saves time, it saves money. <laughs> it saves time, yeah. Um, you know, I joke that, you know, people are like, well, how'd you come up with this, this weird promotion? I said, well, when you're a no-tiller, you got a lot of extra time. <laughs> <laughs> you're, uh, you're not spending the extra time out in the field. Um, you got time to do whatever you want to do. Well, ha talk about, um, I'm of course a backyard gardener. Okay. And uh, so soil health, of course, to us is very important yeah. on a smaller scale. How can we apply this in our own yards at home? Yeah, so the, the basic soil health principles of, of manage more by disturbing less, keeping it covered, keep alive root year round, plant diversity, and then incorporating livestock or incorporating animals might be the, the trickiest part for a backyard gardener, but all the other principles apply no matter where you're at, no matter what soil types you have. Um, 
you know, so using crop rotations and growing different mm -hmm. plants in your garden, um, you know, only, only tilling up, you know, where you want to plant stuff, um, you know, maybe using some, some mulch or some layering of some kind for weed suppression rather than using a rototiller. Um, the the uh, the principles apply everywhere. For yeah. the areas that you are tilling up, do you recommend us doing that uh, uh, with the rototiller, or I mean, does that seem do more damage than if we're just like double digging? <laughs> yeah, uh, double digging would be better. You know, you wanna you wanna limit the the intensity and the frequency of your tillage. You know, so if you can just do a narrow narrow slot mm -hmm. um, versus doing the whole width, that's limiting the you know, the width and everything. Okay, and I know um, some of us, cover crops during the winter yeah. are a good thing to do. Is it still, do we still have time to plant some of those or are we getting kind of towards yeah, the Yeah, we're end? getting pretty late, <laughs> you know. Um, there's some winter hardy uh, species that'll survive the winter. Um, cereal rye is a really hardy species. You could probably plant it now. It's not gonna grow a whole lot, um, but as soon as it starts warming up in the spring, it'll start growing again. You know, it, once it gets just about 32 or a little above, you'll see it starting to get green and starting to grow. And having that live root there will grab on the nutrients and prevent them from being lost and you know, provide erosion control and weed suppression and yeah, lots of, lots of benefits. Okay, so for those who maybe want to start maybe learning more about no-tilling, whether it's large-scale farm operation, you guys are a fabulous resource and maybe helping them with making some of those changes and so forth, correct? Certainly, yeah. NRCS has an office in every county in the state. Um, and our mission statement is helping people help the land. You know, so if you have questions about no-till or soil or soil health, um, just visit your, your local NRCS office, they'd be happy to help. Okay, and you can go to the website. I know you're a great resource there, lots of articles and different things. So I, I thank you so much for coming in this morning. This has been great. <laughs> uh, I know, <laughs> I, you know, I think I, you know, you have a large plot and you just want to till it all up, get it all yeah. cleaned off and so forth. And then when you learn more about what is actually going on and the dynamics of your soil, it kind of changes how we go about things. And because we all, you know, we need, we need to have good soil in our backyards. We do. <laughs> Dig a little and you'll learn a lot. Good job with the No-Till November. Great campaign. And again, if you want to go uh, find out more information, nrcs.usda.gov. Neil, thank you for coming in today. I appreciate it. Good thank information. You.